Well, welcome everybody. This is Steve Winward. And today I'm really excited to have this conversation with John Unterseer. John is going to walk us through how you can leverage the power platform to do vaccine attestation. So welcome, John. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to be talking a little about a solution that we've been putting together uh, in the customer success unit for trying to address the executive orders that have been coming through, executive order 13991 and then 14043 that has recently changed what we're trying to do. So we're pivoting as fast as we can to keep up with the requirements. But this was our first swath at it. That's great. So, and, and what made you decide the Power Platform? Because you have a lot of different options you could have used to build this. But why specifically the Power Platform? So I think the urgency of the request along with the need for what seems to be custom dev, uh, potentially drove us to the Power Platform because of its capability to quickly and easily develop these kind of solutions. Mm -hmm. And it was just one of those things that, OK, let's see what we can put together that our customers who have our normal licensing could use to fill this out without having to spend a whole lot of time on custom development. Because a lot of times, those are you know months of setup to get pushed out. Yeah, that's awesome. And so can people change this easily too? Yeah, so we tried to make it customizable out of the gate. A lot of the different parts and pieces within the application, you're able to just change in a list of settings. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hopefully super customizable, even without understanding Power Platform. But then beyond that, you could always add more pieces and parts to it. This is just kind of building out that initial framework so they have something to go off of. That's awesome. And then just really quickly, um, with regards to this solution, I know that it is deployed in Dataverse for Teams. Could you just describe what that is uh, versus something like full Dataverse? So Dataverse for Teams is kind of our free offering, because that's what we were trying to go for, is something that any customer could use without special licensing. It does have a couple of limitations. We are stuck to about two gig of data or a million rows in that database. But it's essentially an, a nice little backend database for you to store all of this information in. Mm -hmm. Anyone who starts a team who has the right license can then just create a Dataverse for their team. And that stores data on the backend on that individual team. So one of the cool things we thought could happen is if we need to scale out, let's say that million rows isn't enough for you we could add it to multiple teams. So each department could have their own version of this application and be submitting the attestations as needed. That's great. So they have the option to use Teams today, and this solution works right there. And if they want to, they could also go to full Dataverse too. So like, what are some like things that they would get added benefits if they went to the full Dataverse solution? So full Dataverse gives us a lot more storage is the biggest one, because mm -hmm. you can have up to a four terabyte database. And the row limit is gone at that point. So if we have 100,000 employees and we need them all to submit attestations twice a week, we can do that in the full Dataverse version and we'll have the capacity for it. That's awesome. Great. So why don't we switch over and let's see this in action. I'm really excited to see what it looks like. One of the cool benefits that we like with going with the Dataverse for Teams is that we can pin this as an application to the left-hand rail. Mm -hmm. You can do this as if it's a full Dataverse application as well, but it's nice to just have users log in in the morning and go, hey, look, there's my attestation app right here on the left-hand side. I can just click on it. Yeah. I get the privacy statement. This is fully customizable. It's just an HTML block in the background that the users can update. We have to acknowledge that to get on to the next screen here. Mm -hmm. And what we've got is our attestation homepage. We kind of genericized it a little bit. Um, you can add your own images, your own logos. We kind of put some placeholder logos in here for you mm -hmm. to have as, as filler. And the users are going to see two main buttons here, the submitting their attestations and then viewing their previous submissions. The additional links down here at the bottom are customizable. We threw in just a couple of samples saying, you know, where to find a vaccine, where to find a testing location, kind of handy resource links is what we were seeing as, as being a possibility to add here so people could get more information. Mm -hmm. And you can add additional ones and it will scroll down and, and add more areas to that. Um, down here at the bottom, you see there's an admin settings button. I only see that because I'm part of the administrators group that we set up to begin with. The normal users won't see this piece. They'll just have this side on the right here. Okay. So if I go to submit my attestation, it's gonna bring up a form 
And we know that some of our government users don't necessarily have Active Directory accounts or may not use PCs. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to give an option to be able to attest on the behalf of someone else. Very cool. So this is something we can turn on or off if you want to have it there. Mm -hmm. But we can say, I'm submitting for Joe user. And then we can pick Joe user supervisor. And, and that lookup of, right there, that was with Azure Active Directory, right? Correct. This is Azure AD lookup. It's tied directly, and it, it'll let you search for anyone in your uh, directory at this point. OK. Then there's a work site location. You know, if you have a, a, a location that you want to include here, these are customizable. As we can see, someone's been toying around with adding new locations. Sure, sure. Um, we've got our attestation information. So this is some definitions of things like the attestation status, your, you know, mm -hmm. what, what fully vaccinated means. Yep. Again, this is customizable. We just pulled this information directly from the executive order verbiage. Yep. So if you need to customize it, that's up to you guys. Okay. We can choose our vaccination status here. We can say I am fully vaccinated. And then certain fields are going to appear or disappear depending on what you choose here. Mm -hmm. Saying not fully is going to pull up your option to say when your most recent negative test was. Saying you are fully, it's going to ask you the date of the most recent vaccine. Um, or you know, choosing tested negative or I declined to respond. These are customizable as well. So you guys okay. can put Great. your own verbiage in there. Great. So if I say I'm fully vaccinated, I can choose the date. And what we could do here also is add in some logic if you wanted to say that, eh, look, you just got vaccinated today. You need two weeks before you're actually fully vaccinated, just FYI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a coming soon option here. We're okay. looking at making this for mobile as well so that yeah. we can have users just pull out their phone, open the app, and take a quick picture of it. That's going to be a full Dataverse option because the Teams Dataverse doesn't allow you to do the mobile application. OK, um, that's great. That yeah. So, so once again, when we talked about the differences between Dataverse or Teams versus full Dataverse, that's a big value add to go to the full Dataverse solution. Yep. Additionally, you can have a lot more storage with that option, too. So if you're capturing images for people's vaccine cards, this would be a, uh, maybe a great option there. Yeah, and that's why we left it off the initial freemium version, because the two gig cap, you know, mm -hmm. right now, phone photos are huge. Yep. We're talking 16, 20 meg for some of these pictures. So that could eat up your two gig rather quickly. Okay. Uh, we're looking at an option to have those photos stored in SharePoint mm -hmm. for the version that doesn't require the extra licensing. Right. There's a little bit more machinations on the back end to be able to handle that split. Okay. But we're looking to get that in the V2 that we're, we're working on currently. OK, great. Awesome. And then, of course, we certify our attestation here. And notice that the submit button, when I didn't have all of the various pieces and parts filled in, it's grayed out. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. to let users know that they have missed a, a piece somewhere right. along the line if they missed Got the it. date or something. Then once submit pops up, we can just click that button. So we clicked on the submit button. We've got a nice little screen here that shows the information that they submitted. Uh, we added a little add a screenshot for your records, but we mm -hmm. could functionally add something like an email to the user. Mm -hmm. so giving them the information that they attested to. But they've also got the option to go in to the view my submissions on that home page. And they can see all of their previous submissions that they've done on the app. Mm -hmm. This is going to load a little slow for me because I submitted about 30,000 attestations over the course of our testing just yeah. to make sure everything was working well. But yeah, as so you can so see, this doesn't just work for a few records, right? I mean, you've battle tested this with tens of thousands of records, and it's working yep. great, right? Yep. And we're able to export that data and report on it if that's something that you need to do as well. So that's awesome. you can go back through and see all of your previous attestations. Here's Joe User um, that I've submitted for in the past. Now, that's the user experience. We've got a cool little option here for the admins. Like I said, a lot of this is customizable. So we've got our solution settings page. It's a pretty simple, straightforward page that's just going to give you the different configuration options. So this is going to be a landing spot for you to update the names of certain things. The labels in the app itself can be updated here. Yep. Um, attestation messages, the acknowledgment message, even that privacy statement. You can see we've got some HTML in there to make it a little prettier. Cool. 
but anything in here, you change and update, and it updates in the application itself. So it sounds like one of the key takeaways here is it's incredibly flexible, right? So you're trying to just provide what are kind of the basics of what we know as the mandate for the vaccine attestation. But every single agency can absolutely customize this with not just like what you've shown in the admin section, but additionally, they could also change this in Power Platform too, right? Correct. What we're starting with here is an easily customizable piece that you don't even have to understand Power Platform for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you get it installed, you get it all set up according to the wiki documentation, you should just be able to use it as is. Now, yeah. if you want to add extra parts and pieces, fantastic. I'm happy to see that customization happen. Sure. And support's going to be you know, one of those things that if you reach out to Premier, we'll be happy to find someone to help you out with it. OK, great. And, and then where can people go to get started with this? If they want to, to get this or see the documentation, where should they go for that? So that's going to be our, our fancy little AKAMS that you'll bring up there for VaxApp. And that's okay. going to bring you to the GitHub location, where we're going to have the documentation and the deployment guide and the assets for deploying it. So okay. it should be a pretty straightforward. We are continuously evolving this. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping to have multiple revisions. And of course, the new executive order made some changes to the mandates. So we're pivoting to try to catch up to those as well. That's great. And what I love about this is we're being open and transparent about what we're doing. So the latest, the best place to go to get the latest information is this GitHub repo. And also, if you have any kinds of things you want to kind of comment on, you can post an issue here. And that's a great way to get feedback back into the tool that any federal agency can then take advantage of. Yep. That's, that's awesome. Going to be a nice place to uh, just go and see what our latest changes and updates are. Um, we, we should be evolving over the next few weeks to try to get different versions that can be available. Uh, we're also working on some for GCC High and DoD as options. So those will pop up either here or in a linked repo, depending on, on where we want to go with that. Great. So that's a great call out. So today, anybody in commercial or GCC can take advantage of the solution. Yep. And if they want to do that in GCC High or DoD, I believe you said like they would need to do the full Dataverse today? Correct. Got it. Okay. So if they want to do that, they would need something like Power Apps per user or Power Apps per app to be able to run that today. That's correct because of the Dataverse portion of it. All right, John. Well, thank you so much for first off doing this interview, showing off the, the vaccine attestation app. The work that you and your team have done are fantastic. And I know it's going to be a huge help to a number of federal agencies as well. The other call out I want to make really quickly before we wrap up is that here at Microsoft, we love GitHub. And so the GitHub repo we just showed is specific to the vaccine attestation app. So that's the place to go to get that. We also have this link down here, aka.ms slash fedba, and that's our federal business applications GitHub repository, where we'll have a link to this, but also additional federal government specific business application demos and samples. So once again, John, thank you so much for your time. Hope you have a great day and we'll chat soon. Thank you. Appreciate having me.